Club Penguin, Club Penguin is kind of like the game for. No, I'm not doing. I'm not doing this again. You've got to. You've got to be shitting me, dude. It's a. It's a video about Club Penguin. I'm not doing this again. Yeah, this video is about two kids' games, but it's it's not really suitable for kids. So if you're like eight years old or something, it just, just please don't have your parents send me an email. I just re I just really don't have the time for that. <laughs> okay, this one's kind of a stretch, but it makes sense. I've got points. It makes sense. Now I haven't really had much time to make frequent videos recently, and so here I am making a video about how I think that Fortnite is basically the new Club Penguin. This is the content you're all here for. But first of all, we gotta talk about the relic that is Club Penguin. You remember coming home on a Friday, you boot up Club Penguin on Internet Explorer, on your family's Windows XP laptop with that little mouse in the middle for some reason, and 25 minutes later, you'd log your ass into the Iceberg server without the chat filter, because you live life without limits. But why were you so excited to log in on a Friday especially? Is it because you had a whole weekend of fun ahead of you? I mean, yeah, okay, I'm sure that was a contributing factor. I don't know, if you just played Club Penguin all weekend, you loser. But do you know what really made Friday so special? One of the most exciting things I remember as a kid was coming home to a new update on a Friday after school where something new had been added like the secret spy agency, a visit from Rockhopper, new locations on the map, the introduction of Kajitsu. I shit you not, I woke up at 6am that day to play that. The dance parties, the holiday parties, and even though the game consisted of a very small amount of map interaction and mini games that you've probably grown tired of after like a week of playing it, Apart from that, that ice game, the, the arcade game above the nightclub, that game was the shit. It was always something really exciting to come home to on a Friday and experience what massive change had happened with everybody else. I remember it started off pretty small with themed parties in the nightclub. They literally just put a banner on stage like, yeah, there you go, there's your themed party. You get like the occasional free background or hat as well. It didn't matter if you remember or not back then, by the way, the, the good old days. And then new places would start popping up, such as the lighthouse, the theater, the cove. And then eventually a skate park and a hotel, I think was in it when I, I played the Waddle On event. I don't know, because obviously I stopped playing when I got to big boy school. But as the years went on, Club Penguin started to become more and more paid member exclusive. And when Disney purchased the game in 2007 for $700,000, Half of it delivered immediately, and the other half paid if enough kids suckered their parents into buying the memberships over the next two years. Meanwhile, the freebies for non-members plummeted. What a surprise! Eventually, Disney started replacing the fun and exciting parties that the Club Penguin team would come up with for Disney-themed parties, using the game as a marketing tool for upcoming movies, events like Monsters University and Frozen. And oh look, frozen again for some reason. Now luckily I escaped from my childhood unaffected by this marketing by Disney as I stopped playing the game a few years before they started doing it all. But a quick look on YouTube will find that they still had a very active fan base who were very pissed off at the fact that they'd log in on a Friday and everything was just to do with a new Disney film. I mean, I know it's not just for company profits throwing these exclusive events for online games. I mean, when the game was first created, it was run by a small independent team who actually wanted to put the time and effort into making these parties for their small user base. Uh, then again, they probably all owned one of these as well, so... Can't give them that much credit. It wasn't just fun for the players, it was fun for the developers too. A little bit of propaganda you can use there, Disney. But here we are in 2019, two years after the closure of Club Penguin with their Wad Lump party, which, yes, it was very emotional. And yes, there was a lot of, of bots coming in and making swastika symbols. And as sad as it is that it closed down and how a part of my soul actually left my body that day, it's pretty obvious that the game was falling behind on the times and Disney were gonna do something about it. So they replaced the beloved online game with a 3D mobile app instead. And anybody who played this Notice very quickly 
that you had to be a member to do almost anything. As you can imagine, that died pretty quickly. So we've reminisced about Club Penguin, or if you're a Fortnite fan who's never heard of it, you probably just spend the whole time getting over the fact that people actually used to spend hours on a, a point and click penguin game. Yeah, come to think of it, but no matter who you are, you're probably still wondering, how is Fortnite the new Club Penguin? Ah! It's not, this whole video is clickbait. That joke is brought to you by Audible.com. Click my link in the description to find out that I don't have a sponsorship from them. Let me break it down for you. Uh, free to play. Free to play? Paid memberships? A paid battle pass. Paid member exclusives. Paid member exclusives. Damn. Map changing parties. Map changing events. Uh, Disney advertisements. Oh, oh my. Look at that. He's dancing. Now, for all you Club Penguin fans who don't know what Fortnite is, what have you been doing? Where have you been? Stop playing Club Penguin rewritten and get some sleep. Maybe get some vitamin D. It's good for you. Have you got rickets? If you don't, you probably will do soon. Fortnite, if you're unaware, is a free-to-play battle royale game where you kill people? Okay, you definitely didn't kill people in Club Penguin, but that minecart racing game did get pretty intense at times. <laughs> Without a diddly doubt, battle royale games are taken over for kids and adults alike. I'm not seeing enough movement. It's pretty hard to go anywhere anymore without seeing or hearing about Fortnite. And unfortunately, a majority of the following is from young children. <laughs> Much like Club Penguin, except CP was mostly designed for kids, whereas Fortnite has guns and killing. And it's unfortunately resulted in possibly the cringiest generation of games to date. If you disagree with that statement, I'd kindly recommend you coming back after visiting a young relative with an Xbox or just watching this. Epic Games. That's that's right. Epic on my hand. That'll be funny. I don't want to. I don't want to have to wash it off. Epic Games offers this battle pass system every season, where the more challenges you do, the more free items you unlock, exclusive to that season. Now, if you pay 950 V bucks, which between you and me costs real money, you get the battle pass, which is a little bit better than the uh, battle pass. The golden battle pass that you have to pay in-game currency for, which between you and me again costs real money. It's a lot more exciting and has unlocks for you every step of the way. Let's compare the two. The standard battle pass. Occasional emotes and sprays. Basic backgrounds. Uncommon pickaxes and gliders. A tiny amount of in-game currency. And it ends way before the gold one does. Cool. The golden battle pass. Constant unlocks. New characters. Pets, I don't really know why. Lots of emotes, sprays, and backgrounds. Much more in-game currency. Additional XP for you and your friends. Rare dances, back bling, gliders, and everything else from the regular pass. And it goes on for like eight times longer. Wow, sounds like if you're not paying for the battle pass, you're not getting rewarded anything more than just a pat on the back. Thanks for playing, buddy. That being said, it sounds very similar to not having a membership in Club Penguin. Let's have a look. Free membership. Occasional accessories, such as hats and backgrounds. Standard igloo. The friendship bracelet. Only red or blue puffles. Limited purchases available. Paid membership, everything. Literally everything. Outfits, exclusive rooms and events, exclusive igloos and furniture. Every friggin' puffle in the game. Uh, what else do you want? You can have everything in this game. It's, it's, just pay. Just pay Disney, please. Just pay Disney. So although Fortnite's Battle Royale mode doesn't restrict any type of gameplay like Club Penguin occasionally did with the member-only rooms during events, they only allow free players to access a certain amount of unlockables. Now luckily, just like Club Penguin, these cosmetics don't actually aid any kind of game progression. Uh, I don't really know what buying like a Chewbacca suit in Club Penguin would help with, uh, but I'm sure Disney would find a way to milk that money cow anyway. And sure, if say you bumped into a John Wick like a year ago on Fortnite, you'd probably be in for a pretty hard battle, but he wouldn't have any sort of special abilities coming with the skin. Probably gonna have a bunch of younger Fortnite fans like, John Wick? When was the last time this guy played Fortnite? Like in, in the 90s? <laughs> I bet this guy's like 40. I bet this guy hasn't even landed at, at the volcano yet. I know, I'm just kind of grasping at straws here. And unfortunately, a couple years into being bought out, 
Club Penguin became Disney's money-making machine, limiting so much to members only. God, I'm so passionate about this. Ah. And although Fortnite is actually kind of getting a little bit more lenient with freebies, like the free V-Bucks in the Battle Pass if you haven't bought it. And I'm pretty sure there's a new feature where if you complete all the challenges from the last Battle Pass, you get one for next season for free. Don't quote me on that. They are still racking in the fat stacks from that item shop. Here comes the money! I wish I had some real money to do that with. Oh, oh wait, shit. <laughs> yes. 30 pound, baby. That's enough to buy me like two skins. That's not even a lie. <laughs> now every day, the item shop updates with new characters, pickaxes, dances, camos, back blinks, and more. With exclusive outfits every few days, there are many players who suffer from huge FOMO, which is the fear of missing out. And in this case, on certain exclusive outfits or items. But recently, Epic Games has started bringing back some rare items due to the increase of people selling accounts of rare skins such as the Skull Trooper or Red Knight in. And I've got to give him credit for this. I mean, as frustrating as it is for some of us older players who have so many original skins, there was a huge issue here that people were literally charging hundreds for accounts with these skins. But the issue here is that all the unlocks cost a large amount of V-Bucks that you have to buy with real money, with legendary outfits costing £15 or $20 at times alone. However, the advantage Fortnite has over Club Penguin with exclusive items is that you don't need to be a paying member to purchase them from an item store. Uh, you just need to pay for the currency, which is arguably much worse. Unless you've somehow saved up 1,000 V-Bucks over six months of playing for free. In that case, I commend you. How's that one skin doing for you? Let's talk about events! Whoa! Let's talk about the events. A Club Penguin would completely decorate the island for certain events, starting off by painting the buildings green for St. Patty's Day, adding some Christmas trees at winter, making the island all spoopy for Halloween. It was the bomb. And ever since Fortnite started in 2017, this has been a big part of their design, with the Halloween update being the first major change, adding decorations to the maps, altering weapons with pumpkin launchers, adding new spoopy skins. Soon, followed by the giant Santa balloon battle bus at Christmas. Who could forget? Now, it would definitely be bold for me to say that Fortnite developers were inspired by Club Penguin, but it would also be unrealistic for me to say that none of them experienced it during its prime, especially if those developers are in their 20s. And there is no doubt in my mind that they have been inspired by other major games doing similar, with newer titles such as Overwatch and League of Legends, even going back to PS2 games such as Scooby-Doo and the Night of 100 Frights and how the scenery changed as your console's date did. I shit you not, if you've still got a PS2 and that game, boot up your PS2 right now, set it to Christmas Day, put that game in, Boom, it's snowing. It's beautiful. However, this may be a stretch here, but the extreme changes that have happened to Fortnite over the course of the last eight seasons are very reminiscent to me of the extreme map changes Club Penguin would experience. Remember when Club Penguin introduced that secret agency thing? It kind of reminds me of when Fortnite started introducing all those secret agent bases around the map. Hmm. Hmm. Remember when new exciting places used to be added to the Club Penguin map out of the blue? Kind of reminds me about when Tilted Towers. What the? Just came out of nowhere and dominated the map. Mm -hmm. Remember when Club Penguin introduced the Kajitsu thing and the dojo got struck by lightning and everyone had to help dig it out? It kind of reminds me of actually quite a, a lot more dramatic stuff has happened in Fortnite than that. Dude, a fucking meteor hit the map. A meteor hit the map. And an absolute huge <sighs> amount is happening in every major update of Fortnite. They're absolutely killing the game, keeping it fresh and exciting for their player base of like eight year olds who, who don't like doing the same thing for more than like a week. I guess what I'm getting at here is so we all used to get very excited for such game-changing and dynamic events that were happening as we were all playing together. And as Club Penguin has died, we've all moved on and it's planted the seed for Fortnite to grow. <laughs> but Fortnite offers that same excitement for a new generation of gamers in the form of constantly updating map and game events. Now, as someone who is the target demographic for Club Penguin during its prime, I'm unfortunately getting to the point now in my life where I'm tearing my hair out over deadlines I'm working all the time, and you find less time for games like Fortnite. So it's safe to say a lot has happened in Fortnite that I barely played at all. But what I have experienced is Tiller Towers just coming out of nowhere, the Meteor, and the huge map changes that came with it, a Rip Factories and Detroit, or Hogwarts as you bozos call it, the rocket, the huge crack in the sky, the desert. Remember that happening? It just popped out of nowhere. Oh, probably not, because since then, a huge chunk of ice has just popped out of nowhere as well. A pirate area, apparently, a tomato temple, a huge cube rolling around the map, Luke Lake completely transformed after a huge island literally floated around the map, a volcano appeared, apparently that marshmallow dude did a concert. Like, I, 
I just don't understand. So now when I say that I think Fortnite is the new Club Penguin, does it seem so bizarre? Does it seem so, ah, so totally random and unique? I'm sure you can argue that there is a bunch of different games that the Fortnite dev team took inspiration from. Uh, probably not Club Penguin. But you can see there's a bunch of pretty similar comparisons there. Please, please don't roast me about this. From penguins to pump shotguns, I've been your host, Antarctic. And no, I won't be featuring your poem in the Daily Puffle. You're an illiterate child. <laughs> <laughs>